Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, because of the interest we have here, I'll just have two uh, brief questions. Uh, one, General Milley, in 2018, you testified that it's hard to compare the U.S. and Chinese defense budgets because China's budget is very different. And for a better comparison, we need to make some adjustments. And we have, we have done that. Uh, little things like the, the cost of labor and, and all of that. But making those adjustments is not easy. And that's why we required in last year's defense authorization bill that the Pentagon do a study to try to make this uh, comparison. Um, China and Russia combined probably spend more than we do. I made that point in a, an op-ed piece uh, last May. So I would ask you, uh, General Miller, uh, Milley, the uh, Chinese and Russian economies and defense spending are unique and uh, given this, do you think that their relative combined effort is similar to ours, and do you think that they understate uh, the, uh, the spending that they're, they're doing? Uh, Senator. Mike. Senator, the, uh, both of our analysis, uh, DOD's analysis and the intelligence community's analysis of budgets for um, both Russia and China are classified. At non-classified level, I would tell you that uh, combined, the Russian and Chinese budgets uh, exceed uh, our budgets if all the cards are put on the table. Uh, both governments do not put all their cards on the table when it comes to their budget. Um, it's, a, it's a very difficult thing to discern that which is being spent on their defense versus uh, other uh, priorities. Uh, with respect to China, they have put significant levels of effort uh, of their economy, and of course their economy is second only to ours, mm -hmm. uh, significant levels of resources into building the Chinese military. And the Chinese military is, we've noted many times before, is on a significant increasing rise in capability over the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, and, uh, and they continue to invest heavily in that. That's right. Uh, and uh, Secretary Austin, during your confirmation hearing in January, you said, and this is a quote, you said, I see ch China, in particular, as a pacing challenge for our department, and that uh, you need our help to deter China. Now, I'm worried that if we underfund uh, the military, our military, we will undermine the, uh, our alliances and, uh, and weaken deterrence. And, and uh, in your opinion, well, let me just uh, state this: uh, we have we have felt for some time and have said that when we we have countries that, uh, the, uh, the, and, and it happened that we, uh, Senator uh, Rounds and I, went to diff uh, six different countries last week. One of those was Romania. And they reminded us that uh, we talked to them about 2%. They should get to 2% for the defense spending. And they did that. And they told us that they did that. And yet, they're looking at us actually reducing our funding. And I'd just like to have you comment on what kind of effect that might have to other countries, too. Well, well thank you, uh, Senator. I, I would say that uh, when you look at our overall contributions uh, to, to NATO, we, we contribute a substantial uh, amount to, uh, to the NATO effort, and we'll continue to do so going forward. Uh, I think uh, the budget gives us the right mix of capabilities uh, and the flexibility to uh, to be very effective uh, in our efforts uh, to to um, deter China going forward, or in Russia, or anyone else who would want to take us on. So I'm I'm confident that this budget uh, will allow us to match our our resources to our strategy and our strategy to to our policy. Yeah, my concern has been that uh, our insistence in the previous administration, which I agreed with, that we reached the 2% in these other countries, and they see that it, it appears that our, our expectations are much less in this administration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.